so what is a Goldilocks zone and why is it called a Goldilocks zone instead of something else? Well, it's actually known also as a circumstellar habitable zone, or a CHZ. And it's called a Goldilocks zone because of its definition or what it relates to. It's a story about a girl who comes upon the cottage of three bears and she finds the things in the home that are just right. She tests out a chair and finds that it's too hard. Another chair is too soft and she finds one that's just right. The same is true for a pot of porridge. She finds one that's too hot one that's too cold, and one is just right. This relates to the Goldilocks zone when it applies to stars and planets because we're looking for planets that are just right. Now the question is, is just right for what? In the case of the Goldilocks zone, we're looking for water. It's just right for there to be liquid water on the surface of the planet. Now if the planet is too hot, we won't have any liquid water because it'll all be boiled away. And if it's too cold, it'll be frozen and solid water. Now the question is, is why is water so important and why are we looking for these Goldilocks zone planets? Water is so important because as we look at life on Earth, which is our one example of life on a planet, we see that all life relies upon liquid water. So when we're looking for other planets in our galaxy that may have life, one of the best things we can look for is planets that would have liquid water. And that's why scientists are looking for planets in a habitable zone. Every star would have its own habitable zone. And they're going to be different sizes depending upon the star. The distance away and the size of that Goldilocks zone, or the circumstellar habitable zone, depends a lot upon that star. If that star is really hot, the zone will be much farther away. It will also have the opportunity to be much bigger. If that star is cooler, the zone's going to be closer to that sun and it's also going to be a smaller zone. All of these things play into where astronomers look for life in our galaxy. Because we know what life is like on Earth, and we know that the Earth is in the Sun's Goldilocks zone, we look for Goldilocks zones around other stars. And it's in these Goldilocks zones where we look for life because we assume that life there will be similar to life here. And those are the places where we focus our attention to try and find other planets that might have life on them. Now scientists have done a lot of work looking for planets in habitable zones or Goldilocks zones around stars in our galaxy. In fact, it's estimated that somewhere between 500 to 150 billion different planets in our galaxy likely exist in Goldilocks zones around their stars. And these same 50 to 150 billion planets might hold life. Now let's look at a couple examples of some planets that have been discovered in Goldilocks zones of other stars. The first one we're going to look at is Galice 581d. Now this planet was discovered in 2011 by a group of French astronomers. Now one thing we've noticed is that it likely has liquid water on its surface and even could have clouds and warm rain. One thing that is different though is its gravity is about twice that of Earth's. Another example is HD 40307g. Now this planet is found smack dab in the middle of its star's circumstellar habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone. The difference from Earth though is it's seven times larger than Earth. There are still a lot of questions of what this planet is like. Is it solid like Earth, or is it a gas planet like Neptune or Saturn or Jupiter? Now a lot of scientists believe that this planet is going to be much more like a warm Neptune than like Earth. The final example is Tau Ceti e. Now this planet is found on the inner edge of its star circumstellar habitable zone or Goldilocks zone. Now this would be a problem of our solar system. In fact, this planet is closer to its sun than Venus is to ours. Now this would be a problem except for there are some key differences. This star is twice as old as our sun and it emits half as much light. This gives Tau Ceti e a good chance for having liquid water on its surface. 